So welcome back guys and I hope you and your family are well. You can probably hear in the background I've got a kettle boiling up and we're going to do an experiment today. So um, what I wanted you to think about was the work that you've done on heat and you know quite a bit now about transfer of heat, conduction, convection and radiation. But what if I make myself a drink? So here we go with the boiling water. And I kind of leave it for a while. So I go off and do some teaching and I forget about it. What's going to happen? Well, I think uh, you'll probably say it's pretty obvious. Um, it'll cool down. Yeah, it'll cool down. But what I want to know is, um, will it cool down really quickly or really slowly? Will it go down by one degree C every minute? In other words, um, how does the uh, temperature change as time ticks away? So this is an experiment you can do at home if you've got a thermometer that goes all the way up to 100 degrees C. Um, do it safely, of course. Um, what I've got is my mug, and this was given to me by a pupil many years ago, which was really kind. And I'm going to measure the temperature in here every two minutes. So I've got myself a stopwatch, and I'm going to wait for the temperature to level out. And then I'm going to take a reading OK, start the stopwatch and that's going to be the starting temperature. And then what I'm going to do is see what the temperature is every two minutes. And uh, we'll then plot a graph of how the temperature changes with time. So I'm going to take my first reading now and I'm going to, I've got a table in front of me here where I can write it down. So that reading is going to be taken now. Started the stopwatch and I'm getting 86 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to put 86 degrees centigrade and next to time t equals naught on my table. I'm going to wait two minutes and then I'm going to take another reading and continue to do that in intervals of two minutes and we'll see what we get. So I'll see you soon. So we're coming up to two minutes so I'm going to take my next reading. So three, two, one, two minutes. So that is 81 degrees centigrade. So I've got my table here. So after two minutes, 81 degrees centigrade. So uh, I'm going to carry on and do this. And it's a shame you're not here because you'd be doing it otherwise. So I'm going to continue to write down the temperatures every two minutes. And we'll see then how this uh, cup full of hot water cools down. OK, so I left that running for a bit of a time and I've collected the data of what the temperature was every two minutes and I've run the experiment for 22 minutes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to graph our data and I'm going to go up to the board to explain how we're going to do that. OK, so let's have a look at our results. So I've got a data table and I'm going to share that with you. And what I want you to do is I want you to plot a graph of the data that we've got. OK, it doesn't matter if you haven't got a sheet of graph paper, any white sheet of paper will do. Just try the, your best, but make sure to space the numbers out evenly. And so your axes will look something like this. So the independent variable, the one that we knew was time, and we measured the time in intervals of two minutes. OK, so time in minutes. And this was the temperature, uh, the dependent variable, in degrees C. OK, so uh, maybe pause the video now and draw yourself a graph and uh, put your numbers on the axes. It's um, OK to start here on the temperature scale. It's OK to start at sort of um, 20. It's probably better to start at naught, actually, for my explanation. But you do what you think. But remember that these numbers have to go 2, 4, 6, 8, and these have to go up evenly. So 2, 4, 6, 8, or 5, 10, 20, um, you know, sorry, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. Okay? They have to have even spacings between them. So I'll give you a moment to draw your graph, and then we'll come back and look at what you've done. So I hope you've got your graph in front of you now. And 
And uh, when I did mine, I noticed that I had a high temperature at the start and the temperature sort of dropped away, but it wasn't a straight line. Now yours might not be quite as curvy as this. I think it's quite, it looks a bit more level and it begins to level off. So did you think that the temperature would like drop sort of one degree C every two minutes? Well, no, it didn't. And I'm going to go around here to draw my line of best fit as best I can. Okay, not a brilliant line, but it'll have to do. And um, what you notice here that's really important is when something cools down, it cools down quickest when it's hottest. Okay, so when it's got a lot of heat in it, it likes to lose that heat quite quickly via conduction, convection and radiation. And as it cools down, it loses less heat per minute, so it doesn't cool as rapidly. So it's not maybe what you expected, the temperature to go down two degrees centigrade every two minutes or something. If you make a hot drink, it's going to cool really quickly to begin with, and it's then going to slow down and remain really tepid. So the final thing I have to ask you is, what would happen if uh, we ran this experiment for much longer? We only did 22 minutes. Well, if we ran it and ran it and ran it and ran it, this graph would finally level out. And can you think about where it would level out? So it's obviously going to stop, and I'll come back here to show you. It's going to stop there, okay, and stay at the same temperature, hopefully. And that is going to be maybe 20 degrees C. Who knows? But it's not getting any hotter and it's not getting any colder. So it's not losing any heat um, to the environment. It's staying at the same temperature. And this here will be room temp. Okay. So it will cool down until it reaches the temperature of the room. And if that was to wiggle up and down a bit over the period of a day or so, it means the temperature in your room is going up and down. And if the temperature in the room went to 22, it would warm up your cup of coffee. So I hope you found that experiment useful and you've learned a little bit about how liquids cool. It's interesting, isn't it, that a really hot drink will cool really quickly and then it slows down and slows down and slows down and it'll remain tepid for an incredibly long length of time. I'm pretty used to this. I go and make a drink and then to come in and teach and it's lovely and hot. I get talking for a while and it cools really quickly and I'm left for the whole of the rest of the lesson and maybe into the next lesson with a sort of warmish coffee, but it's not very nice to drink. Anyway, we'll be doing another experiment together at some stage and I look forward to seeing you then.